Let's make something dangerous. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. This week I've been making some treacherous crossings. So, classic rope bridge, very Indiana Jones-like, and uh, yeah, pretty iconic, pretty self-explanatory, rickety in design, but not the way I've designed mine. Mine's very sturdy and durable and designed to be played on. And secondly, kind of horrible pool of acidic something or other. I mean, it depends on what color you do this thing. It can just, it could be anything really. But it also has pretty cool little stepping stones. All, all magnetic. So, yeah, stepping stone crossing. How cool is that? Two interesting and pretty dangerous crossings. Let's find out how I made them. And so starting with the pool of acidic goop, I'm taking a piece of XPS form using a sharpie and I'm going to draw on a kind of shoreline and this will give me an idea of where everything needs to be. There's a few holes here in the middle that are going to be for where the magnets will sit to allow these stepping stones to be placed evenly across the surface. I'm going to build up the edges with a bit of XPS form offcuts and hopefully that will ensure a nice lip around the whole thing to hold in any water effects that are applied later. And then I turned to using some filler around the edges just to smooth out the transition between the uh, offcuts of form and the middle section. This process also helps to shape the inner pool there as you'd like it to be and also helps provide a bit of texture around the outsides for uh, painting later. And while that filler is still wet, I transferred it to a tray and I applied a few bits of modeling sand around the edges. I then put magnets in all of these holes using some hot glue. Uh, it's worthwhile noting that all of the magnets are the same way up uh, polarity wise. That way all of these stepping stones can be applied to any of the magnets. And then used filler just to smooth out the areas around the magnets to hide the indent that they created. Now I usually prefer my modular terrain to be kind of 2D but on this occasion I wanted to add a little bit of details so I chose a piece of XPS form from my offcuts basket and I carved this into a stalagmite and I textured it with an aluminium ball as well and just placed it into the filler as it was still drying. As you can see there, I placed another two as well uh, across the top edge. Uh, here I'm taking a paintbrush handle and I'm just stabbing in a few holes uh, in between where the stepping stones are going to be. Uh, this is going to hold a few ball bearings which will act as small bubbles on the surface of the pool. And then it's time for the undercoat. I'm using the typical black paint and Mod Podge to help protect the entire piece a little bit and preserve that form. I also found a tiny piece of chain and added two loops to the end so I could stick this into the stalagmites at the top there. 
And now I've glued in place the ball bearings in yellow there, and these magnets here are also just there to show me the respective positions of the magnets uh, underneath, which are now completely invisible. I decided I wanted this chain to be cut and kind of strewn about across the edges just to add up some extra details. I've also put in a sword there in the bottom right corner. There's a skull and a piece of uh, bone as well at the side. And now I'm just going to glue these chains down so that they don't move. Alright guys, really quickly. Um, the whole pool uh, idea is going to rest very heavily on the, uh, the fluid that you choose to go into it. So you can have different things like lava or kind of pink ooze, like that stuff from Ghostbusters. Um, maybe black could be like tar pitch or weird primordial ooze from Prometheus. Um, red could be like blood. Um, yeah, I think green though is going to be my colour of choice purely because it could be acidic or just some weird corrosive slime. And it's just generally the most universally usable maybe so i want to go with green um but feel free to just experiment with whatever colors you got and heck i might even make a cool lava one everyone likes you know a big lava pit so yeah let's get to it let's go with green okay so obviously i chose this kind of sickly yellowy green so the idea here was just to choose a few variations of this color and blend them together to create potentially deep looking areas. There is going to be some water effects that is already tinted to go on top of this, but this base color here is just in case any of the uh, water effects doesn't cover the color underneath, uh, which would have been just a black undercoat. It's time to overbrush the edges in a nice medium grey. And to add a little bit of variation around the edges, I use a bit of an earthy brown tone to simulate a little bit of mud and dirt. I also then tried my hand at a little bit of wet blending to try and smooth out the transition between the sickly green colour of the centre and the edges of the pool as well. And once that was completely dry I added the black brown wash that goes over pretty much everything I make using a stippling technique so that I don't wipe off any of the underlying layers of paint creating a kind of horrible foggy mixture. I even ran some of the wash into the actual pool area that's a little bit watered down just to help the transition. And there you go, that's where we're up to so far. These metal components like the sword and the chain all need doing so I'm going to use some Rhinox hide on them and then I'll hit that with a little bit of riser rust afterwards. Okay, so it's time for the scary bit. I'm going to use some CFS water clear epoxy resin, uh, two part, and it's crystal clear when it dries. But I'm going to tint this with a little bit of Nurgle's Rot. And a little bit of a much lighter green as well. Okay, it's time to pour, so nice and gently, nice and carefully trying to minimize the amount of air bubbles that get caught in this, so go quite close to the piece that you're pouring onto. And then it's just a matter of moving it around. You can use a spatula or a coffee stirrer, 
a piece of random wood or cardboard or something to help smooth it out and get it into all the corners. Now this resin will find its own level so obviously it will dry incredibly flat uh, which doesn't look real so I added some Nurgle's Rot to some gloss Mod Podge and I'm just going to paint this over the entire surface quite, quite thickly and hopefully this will give the surface of this pool a bit more of a dynamic appearance. The key to making the surface look more dynamic is to blow ripples into it and I'm using a straw because I don't own an airbrush and this is the only way I've really got to produce this effect. And apologies for the shadow caused by my head. Right now onto the stepping stones. I originally thought about using some very thin pieces of foam uh, but they're obviously quite brittle and snap really easily and with them being removed and replaced a lot uh, and obviously being magnetized down I didn't want to use them. So I'm choosing to use this stuff. This is Formex. It's like a very soft but usable plastic and I can texture the sides it was pretty difficult, I had to use uh, a lot of force and uh, a few different tools, aluminium balls, rocks, things like that. So I just painted them up the same way as I painted the edges and they were ready to go. These are the incredibly thin neodymium magnets that I'll be using to s secure the stepping stones to the pool. Uh, compared to the other magnets that have been placed in the base, you can see the difference between them. This should help the stepping stones sit nice and flush to the surface. And then I'll just add a little bit of moss to the stones and around the edges as well. Alright, so moving on to the rope bridge. Uh, this presents a bit of a difficulty because rope bridges are by nature fairly weak and rickety and unstable, but I want this one to be usable and durable and game worthy really, so I'm putting it on a base of Formex. Of course you can use something like MDF or Form or something like that just to keep it a little bit steady. At either end of the bridge there is a 3 by one inch area. I'm going to cover this with a piece of 5mm thick foam. Uh, this can just ensure that the bridge is compatible and will line up nicely with my individual uh, already existing uh, dungeon tiles. And I'm just going to add a little bit of texture to these pieces using the aluminium ball and some sand. I'm attempting a bit of a broken slab idea on one of these pieces, just depressing the form with a bit of dowel and hopefully leaving some raised areas which might look like some broken uh, stones or broken slabs.
and then just stick those bits down to the base, the base which has been undercoated with a black primer. Using a paintbrush handle I'm just going to poke a few holes in the foam for the dowels to sit in. These are going to be the supports for the bridge to span across. And I'm going to use good old coffee stirrers for the planks of wood that go across the rope. And these are going to be stained using my standard black brown wash. This is the same stuff that I would use on all of my stonework. And I'm just going to put them all in a little cup and then soak them in it. And then I can take them out after about five minutes and let them dry. I'm going to give these parts here a bit of an undercoat in black. And then a dry brush in a light grey. And then add a few dirt patches between the slabs. Now I think using string or twine or any sort of thing like that for a rope bridge is going to be really really fiddly and delicate and kind of uh, not rigid and generally not durable. So I'm going to use some florist wire. Here I've wrapped a few lengths of it around my drill and suspended on the other side on a piece of dowel in a vise. And then really all you need to do is just turn on the drill and that will wrap up the wire into a nice braided rope pattern and this is obviously a lot more durable a lot more rigid than string or twine would be and it makes a really good cable as well if you're doing some sort of uh, futuristic or modern day piece of terrain As you can see there, I've secured it to the posts and I've used a bit of green florist wire to kind of bind it together a little bit. And that looks quite effective as a rope analogue. And using a little bit of super glue and those wooden planks from earlier, I'm just going to stick those down to the ropes. And you'll notice I'm using three planks to an inch, so it's easy to figure out how far you've moved along the bridge. And I added the handrail ropes using the florist wire again. but it doesn't look quite right yet, so time for a fiddly bit. So just using one strand from a piece of braided string, I'm just feeding this through the gaps with a lot of difficulty. There we are, I think that will do nicely. Alright, now it's time to paint the ropes. So I'm going to go over all of the rope material, that's the supports and the handrails, and the bits underneath the planks as well. This was a little bit fiddly and required a little bit of patience and time. And after that was dry, I gave the whole thing a nice covering of my black brown wash. Then just blacked the edges of the base to create some negative space. And then added a few bits of moss here and there.
There we are guys, all finished. So the idea with these, it's worth mentioning the dimensions a little bit. They are designed with my current D&D tiles in mind, so they are the same height uh, along the edges. I think it's a centimetre for, for mine, but for yours it might be half an inch or whatever. Uh, also the length of them is seven inches. Most things in D&D, if you're a D&D player, you'll know, uh, generally move something like six inches uh, during the kind of uh, the combat phase. Uh, with these things being seven inches long, this means that pretty much everything is going to get bottlenecked in the party. So nothing's going to be able to make it entirely from one side to the other. Some things are slightly quicker than others, but most things are going to struggle to get across this uh, in one turn anyway. The width of the pool also is the inner dimension of the bridge, allowing a kind of acidic pit crossing type thing. So yeah, you can, if I can build up the height on either side of this uh, pool, I can have this as a crossing and they'll work together as a kind of a dual crossing. I'm also on Instagram if you want to check that out, feel free to go in there and uh, leave me comments and show me your own pictures of the things that you might have made that you might have copied from a channel, feel free to do that and give me all your comments and feedback. Also I am on Facebook, I don't really use that too often but if you want to check me out and follow me on there then you can do as well. I do have a Patreon set up which I will link in the description as well and uh, that's the best way to support the channel I think. Uh, it really goes towards helping me buy materials and supplies, glues, foam, whatever that I need to keep this channel going and hopefully making more videos for you guys to watch. Please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. I do try and get back to everyone who who comments on my videos and uh, you know give a constructive feedback or take their suggestions and things as well. So please feel free to do that and I will uh, hopefully get back to you really soon. That's it for this one though, I'll see you again next time. Thanks for stopping by and happy crafting.